Well, we have um, devoted uh, a fair amount of our effort to studying one particular form of autism that is admittedly quite rare. Uh, it's called Timothy syndrome, and it affects kids in families that do not have a family history of this disease. They sporadically, in other words, spontaneously, for no known reason, develop a single point mutation, a change in one nucleotide in their DNA. This is the smallest possible change you can imagine. It leads to the DNA coding for a different amino acid, a arginine instead of a glycine. And that turns out to be a structurally very pivotal change, even though it's so tiny. What happens is that the protein that harbors the mutation, the calcium channel, no longer shuts itself off as rapidly as it would normally do. That means that the window of time over which calcium can enter the cell is greater, or more calcium can come into the cell. And in the heart, that leads to an abnormal heartbeat called long QT syndrome. Uh, and that was the basis of its discovery because it was done by heart people uh, in a heart clinic by a woman named Catherine Timothy. She was astute enough to observe that the kids had slightly odd sorts of behavior and when they consulted with an expert, Helen Togger Flusberg, she concluded that three-fourths of the children with Timothy syndrome actually have some form of autism or autism spectrum disorder. Now, without quibbling about names and titles uh, for the disease or for the disorder, that is an amazing percentage. To be able to go from one amino acid to a disease with such penetrance tells us a lot. It says that the calcium channel is really important, that somehow it's tied up with the brain as well as the heart, and it offers us the opportunity to try to understand a very complicated disease with many, many genes involved by taking a bit of a shortcut. Because the idea is that if we can figure out how a human with that simple change gets autism, maybe we'll have a clue to the more general case, even if it doesn't involve calcium channels at all. So there's no claim that by studying this we are immediately going to come to the answer. It's just like a Rosetta Stone for figuring out uh, what is involved in autism.